This is a short bite episode of Homeschool Together. Hello and welcome to Homeschool Together. Thanks so much for joining us. We're about to embark on on the great epic journey of trying to explain to you homeschool parents <laughs> who are listening to this short bite edition exactly what the heck is Pokemon. We have well, this, well, I mean, let's be specific. Pokemon, Pokemon the, the trading, trading card, card game. game. Yes, we so are. because that's just a whole, you know, there's there's all kinds of Pokemon. There's lots things. of Pokemon out there. Um, we have uh, our daughter went to McDonald's and got the uh, uh, with with her nana and papa uh, multiple times when she was away and got the a Happy Meal and was given Pokemon cards <laughs> for for the little Happy Meal gift. And the whole ride home when I was driving home from picking her up, it was a multi hour drive. Um, I listen to a young girl tell me endless stories about how she plays her Pokemon cards. And there's only like six or seven cards. And I knew that was not enough to actually play Pokemon, but she was making her own little, you know, making up her own Pokemon game. And, and I said, trying to read the cards. That's, the I think, cards, the yes. nugget here is we yep. have a we have a, a child who loves to be read to, who loves to listen to audiobooks, and who doesn't want to read herself at all, even not though yet, she's got yet. a lot of the basic skills She's to got do the so. skills. She'll read you your early readers if you... Uh, if you force her. And, right. Uh, but she loves books. And, and so anything that she wants yeah. to read, we lean heavily into. Thus, I am holding two 60-card <laughs> boxes of Pokemon, the trading card game. So specifically, where did you get these? Well, we went to the Walmart. And in the card aisle, I think there's um, it's where the you know action figures are. But they have a little Pokemon section. And I'm sure the Pokemon experts will go into the comments and tell me that this is not where you should start or whatever. But uh, this we, is, this we is, had no guidance. So this we, is what we did. We, this is listen. We're 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 blind men in the woods. Uh, we, we're trying to figure out what to do. So basically, I picked up um, the first thing I saw, <laughs> which was <laughs> the uh, there's the basically there, it's called the V battle, and I, I'm sure you'll find it there at Walmart. There's two packs. There's a Lichen Rock and a Corva Knight. They're two separate packs that each cost about fourteen dollars. They say age is six plus. Six plus. And it says on the left hand corner, it says play level one. Yes. The little Pokeball. Yes. So basically, what you need here is you get the sixty card decks in each box. So it allows you two players to play each other. Right. And in the and this is only a two player game. I think normally, right? It's only ever about. I think it's I, only two. I player. think it's only ever two players again. We're not Pokemon experts. <laughs> We're not. We are going to talk about specifically what Ariel is holding in her hands and how we got around to playing it. So basically, it's two boxes. So one player gets one box and the other player gets the other box. And in the box are 60 play cards, which is the deck that you need to start playing Pokemon. Um, in that deck are a number of cards. We'll try to go through some of them if we can remember. Ariel's having nightmares of the Doug Trio. And, <laughs> you know. Anyway, uh, so basically, then there's a playing mat that has all these various places to put cards. Yeah, it's and just a fold out piece of some, paper. There's some paper. rules. There are some little punch out like cardboardy tokens that that give like point totals. Right. Um, these end up being used to count up like hit points and things of that nature. And then there's also a coin, and a coin is used to kind of flip to do heads or tails. Right. There's a few different cards and the where coins your are kind, a, attack and stuff is based yeah. on heads and tails. Heads or tails, yeah. And the, these coins are pretty cool. So if you have the lichen rock, it's got like the lichen rock on the front of it, which is kind of a like a wolf. And then the corvinite's a, uh, a, a, a kind of a um, a, cor- like it's a crow. I mean, a corvus is is a is a crow. So uh, corvinite's kind of like this dark crow, and the the, the little medallions have their they're icons on it. And then yeah, they're you can, all kind of cool looking. They're kind of cool. It's heavy duty plastic. So it's not really a real metal thing, mm-hmm. but it was really, really nice. It was really cool. Um, we, I let her, because the rules were very hard to learn at first. And for I, a six year old. For a six year old, but also for an adult going into this, it was very difficult to find a video on how to play it. Like, yeah, it's because. Crazy. This whole world of Pokemon, I mean, you're talking about this. It's a gi- It's probably something, I would bet you the yearly totals of Pokemon sales eclipse the homeschool community. Like, I would imagine this thing is bigger than than our little world, uh, our little world of the internet. Um, and it was very hard to find a video on actually how to play it. And it, so we had to go, we had to weed through the the instructions. We had to kind of like force ourselves to start to play it and kind of understand you know, what do you actually do? Because most of the people online where we tend to go for, you know, game walkthroughs and, and pe- people, on, you know, showing you how to play a game, 
all of it is his reviews and it's all very opinionated on like, this is the worst thing or this is the best thing. And, you know, and a lot of the kind of tribalism that comes with uh, video gaming. Um, it was actually kind of challenging to start to play this. So if you're, if you have a, a young one who's starting to kind of express interest in maybe learning how to play some of these trading card deck builder type of games, know that there's a little bit of a barrier to entry here um, to learn how to play it. But Ariel, who is way, I'm sorry, orders of magnitude more patient than I am with <laughs> instructions. We're talking multiple orders. We're talking, you know, Fermi orders of magnitude <laughs> levels of, of more patient than I am. So I allowed her to trudge through the, the instructions um, and she was able to figure out the rules. And it was actually fairly straightforward. Um, once you learn how to play it, I would suggest going through the cards and looking at the cards. There's a lot on every single card. There's hit points, there's actions, there's little indicators, whether it's a basic level or a stage one. There's a lot of information. Yeah. What my learner liked up front mm -hmm. is when we got it, I am, well, the funny, funny thing is I actually went and bought only one box thinking that was all we needed to learn how to play. <laughs> I was sorely mistaken when I looked at the back of it and said, you need another, or it says, I, it's, I think it says it right on the back of the box, Ariel. It says, you, this is only good for one person or something like you yeah. need another box to play. Single player play, Matt, is Ex I think the, what, what it says here. Yeah. There's, there's a very explicitly says this is only for Each one. player must have a 60 card deck of Pokemon cards to play. Bingo. So yeah. there, there, there it was. And I made the mistake. So I had to go back to Walmart and get the other box. It was kind of funny, you know, because I didn't know what I was doing. She really wanted some Pokemon cards. I thought about just buying her a couple packs of Pokemon cards, letting her just play with them and look at them. But I was like, well, let's try to see if we can play this thing. Yeah, it's, let's do it. Because we knew there was like, a game. I'm an intelligent man <laughs> who teaches my child math and reading. I can do Pokemon. And well, and we had some friends that their sons are very into this. So we thought it'd be yeah. interesting. It's funny. The, the game felt a little bit difficult at first when I was yeah. reading the rules, but in basic, every turn you are you have like an active Pokemon well, at well, the front. What's on your... cool? Well, actually, I mean, what's cool on the sheet on the this playout sheet actually gives you the order in which you do things, right? And that was so helpful. And there's a spot for all your cards, so yeah. it's really easy. You don't have to like guess on any yeah. of it. So it's kind of nice. You know, there's an active Pokemon at the front, and that Pokemon you can give him, him or her, whatever it uh, <laughs> energy. These and creatures. if they have, if it has energy during your turn, you can use it to do an attack, and that attack deals like yeah. X amount of damage yeah. and the whole to game the is other active Pokemon. Yeah, so you're it's just it's battling, really, right? Yeah. yeah, it's a battle. It's a head-on-head -head battle, and it's really just one Pokemon versus the other Pokemon. Yeah. That's it. And then you have this whole reserve of all these other Pokemon, yeah. and you can put energy under them to prepare them to go get into the fight or not. You can also evolve your Pokemon. So you you have like kind of a basic one. And mm -hmm. if you draw a better... It's literally called basic, yeah. Yeah, and if you draw a better card in your hand, like a stage one, you can put it on top of the basic card and it just makes that Pokemon more powerful. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're, you're... Basically, you get one chance per turn to hit with a Pokemon that's that's active and then um, the next turn that comes up you have the opportunity to retreat <laughs> yeah. and to pull it back like if it's and got too much damage there's a little you bit of a cost there's a cost associated with moving there's in a cost to yeah. moving it back and then you can kind of switch your troops so you basically have this little army you're building a pokemon and this one active one that's doing the fighting mm -hmm. and then on your turn you also there's some extra item cards and there's some mm -hmm. supporter cards of which are characters in this universe that do different things like heal damage or let you draw oh. extra cards yeah, or yeah. you know do various things so what you're trying to do, kind of the, the basics of it, is you're trying to deal enough hit points to the other active Pokemon that it meets their number at the top of their health or whatever, and it kills them, or mm -hmm. I don't know what the nice word, retires them or something. <laughs> and then um, you get a point, and that's to, uh, in to, the form yeah. of a card. And then yeah. you want the first person to six points wins. Exactly. So the first person to six defeats wins. And so it's just this head-on-head -head thing. I was a little bit surprised about how long it took. Now, we were learning it. Yeah. And, and we were having to read the cards. We were having to read the cards. Yeah. And so what we did was you sat next to her since she's not fully reading yet. And she was trying to read some of the cards. And then you were helping her and kind of strategizing. And I played the other side of it. And it did take us about... 45 minutes or so for for the first game and then down to maybe a half hour for the, the subsequent. So I think that um, I think that saying that this is six plus, I think definitely on the strategy level, that I uh, feels a little low to me. Our daughter's just about to turn seven. I felt like the strategy was a bit above six, really. Yeah. And the reading level was above six. Oh, yeah. So 
I really feel like this is more like an eight plus. Does it say six plus on that it box? It says six plus on this box. And I feel like that is not really accurate. I I'm, don't think that our daughter will be able to play this on her own yeah. until probably next year when she's closer to eight. I wonder if she played a, a bunch more and she was really motivated. She, she, memorized she just kind of memorized cards. what the cards do. I'm yeah. sure she she could she could probably memorize the cards. But as far as reading them, no. it's not like it's all she's easy not, reader she's, words or yeah, something. She's not there yet. Yeah. So, but yeah. strategy wise, maybe but she could she could do it. Yeah. I, I know we walked into it with absolutely absolutely shell shocked eyes walking into it, and at the end of the game, we were all laughing, we were all smiling. It was really fun. I was, was very surprised. Yeah. You know, there's all kinds of different like um, collectible types games, right? There's uh, like Magic the Gathering magic. And stuff, I, which I, is I got a bo- I got some of those to try to figure out how to do that, and which then, is much older. I didn't. You got some another, of those. Yeah, that's the game up on the up on the shelf. I didn't know that yeah. you bought that too. Yeah, that's what I got. Oh, great. Yeah, but it was 13 plus. I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to learn how to play this and maybe I'll bring oh, it in. Oh boy. And, yeah, <laughs> maybe we could play it together. Uh, no. but, but then there's like, so, um, there's, there's Yu-Gi-Oh as well. There's, there's a few things. others. Yeah. I know that I've heard of games like this, trading card based games and Pokemon specifically is being real, real doorways to get kids wanting to read more. Well, and and the other so thing too I think that's really great. One of the reasons why I kind of jumped into this is because she has expressed not only just interest, but also like through her audio books, an intense love and desire for fantasy. Right. Um, she loves fantasy books. She loves fantasy characters. She loves fantasy everything right now. And it's kind of like a, you know, it's a freight train and I'm the coal, the coal operator and I'm just <laughs> shoveling. And she really just wants as much fantasy. Like for example, in our, my, my, my daughter and I, we share our own Libby account. So I have my books, you know, I'm reading like Cormac over here. And then she's reading like, Roll doll over here. So our our books are kind of all in, intermixed. And I had downloaded The Hobbit for myself to listen to um, over the next like week or so. And she just went in there and like, started listening to it. And she, we're halfway through it. And it, like she's th- loving it. She's loving it. And it's like I'm like okay. So I I had that happen. And then she was talking about the Pokemon endlessly. And I'm like okay. She's really into fantasy type of characters and fun fantasy and. And I'm thinking inside my head, I'm like, well, you know, Pokemon is really designed, you know, aesthetically for kids her age and Mm -hmm. for somebody, you know, to enjoy and really, you know, kind of connect with these characters. And, you know, you looked at the cards. They're all very playful. Right. All very fun. Some of them are dramatic and some of them are just kind of funny. And and they're cool. And and this is also something that at our school, there's often like Pokemon clubs that will start up every couple of years where kids will play. This is something that, you know, with most of the games that we do, they're adult and child, but this is actually something she could play at some point in the future here yeah. with another child. And we actually, it's funny, we we got this and then we talked to some her best friend. Yeah. We were talking with her parents and the, her and her brother, they're playing the, the same the game. The same set. Exactly yeah. the same set. So it's really kind of funny. Maybe this will be a, a, a gateway for her, not only to getting more into reading, but also to be able to play games independently with her friends. Exactly. From an educational standpoint, there's a lot of strategy and calculation, right? So you're going, okay, well, I'm going to put my energy here. And that means this guy can give 60 damage. So that's going to do that. Oh, wait, he's going to need 40 more. And then when his turn comes, you're anticipating what's the other person going to do and how many points is that going to be? It's got that chess element where you're trying to think out five or six Right, and it's all like math, right? You're doing all of this subtle, you know, addition, subtraction stuff trying to figure that out. There's also probability involved as well because you're, you're, you're picking up a fresh card every single time and then you have these supporters and item cards that allow you to draw more cards. Mm-hmm. So you're, there's an uncertainty in the deck. Mm-hmm. There's also the strategy based on what you have and what your Pokemon are in front of you trying to time how you defeat it. And it came down to a coin flip. That was very yeah. funny at the very end. Ariel One coin flip. Ariel had this thing. One of, the, one of her characters had to flip a coin. And every time you've, it came up heads, it would be 30 hit points. And she needed two out of three. And she only got... You didn't get any. No, I got one. You got the first one. I got then, the first one, and then, and then I lost it, it the all, next two coin flips. Well, it all came down to that next one. If you the last one, the last one, and you didn't get it, and because of that, she didn't give enough hit points to me, which means my next turn I would knock her out, and it would be the game. Yeah. And so it was kind of cool how that kind of all came together, and and it was very tense at the end. Yeah, yeah. Our first games, couple games, we fumbled around, but that last one was really fun. Yeah, was, and was, she was so excited that you guys had won that game. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of cool. Um, I think that this is a this is a fun one, and s- specifically if your kids express interest in it, we were a little bit leery about like, oh, I don't know if we want to get into like well, a new a whole new with, thing like with Pokemon, you know, there, Pokemon. As we said at the beginning, it, it, it's its own thing, right? It's it's got this world of you know, there's books. There's, there's obviously, there's a whole 
legend and lore and myth mythology around the so video games than, this. Yeah. than there's the card games then there's you know so many iterations of tv shows and movies out there and then there's the aspect of collecting the cards which can be very fun but also you know anxiety r driven because oh i don't have that card or i wanted that card and or there's a lot of protection over my cards and and um, maybe there could be some conflict there and whatnot so there's a lot of like you know, a lot of concern around, you know, going into this collectible world uh, yeah. where there are a lot of adults who are collecting these cards that are meant for children and the cards have enormous value and everything. And so right. it's we're just really worried about her playing the we game. We just want her to play a game, right? And yeah. just have a fun thing. And, we, and we're not really, we're not really doing the video game thing yet, or maybe in the near future. Um, we know a lot of families do, and that's fine. Um, but we're, we're trying to stay away from that. I'd rather have, have embraced the reading aspect and, and playing. And I understand you can read on a video game, but um, doing something more tactile and, and more engaging, I think face to face is something that we were more interested in, in doing this. And so there's a little bit of apprehension trying to allow her to kind of go into this very big world of, of game, but it also, it opens up a social aspect. You're right, as you said, like yeah. you can go and do a club, you can go do, um, you know, a, a myriad of other things. Yeah, and there so, is an online version of the of the trading card the, game the v, too yeah, battle. that yeah. you know kids can do. So I, we haven't looked into that at all, no. but that might be another option to play with other kids. Um, I so. felt like this was you know if you wanted to get into something very basic for about thirty bucks. One of the, I mean, just to step back, one of the first things I did is when I opened up the game, I just let her look at the cards, and my gosh, she spent. 30, 40. I had to pull her away from it because we oh, yeah, had to go. She just was like, she, she was still does. She, she was sorting the cards. She was ordering them. She was putting them together because when they evolve, they're, ev they're you know, they're evolved character, at least in the packs we had were, you know, they looked very similar. Like it was like, oh, it was, was it the Doug, dig, the Diglet? The Diglet. And it turned into the, the du, du trio. trio. Yeah, du trio. Doug trio. Anyway, they looked the same. They looked like little sausages with eyes and anthropomorphized <laughs> sausages. <laughs> and <laughs> anyway, so like she had a really, really fun time just looking through it. And that was kind of what I was originally hoping for. I was wanted to just, you know, going back to my old days, what was it like 30 years ago, riding down to the corner card store and buying baseball cards. Yeah. Right. And then tearing them open and putting them down on my bed and looking at the cards, flipping them over, reading the stat lines of, you know, so-and-so and, -so and how many home runs did he have in 1988 and 1999? You know, it's like you do all these really, really fun things with the cards. And then I used to, and it, I think you did this as well. I did football, yeah. You know, yeah, you, know you would sort them by team and then you would sort them by the numbers and mm -hmm. then you'd sort them by team again. And then yeah. sometimes you'd sort them by, you know, who was the best player that year and the worst player and, you know, all those type of things. And and then you go get the Beckett catalog and find out, yeah. oh my gosh, did you know this card is worth seven cents? If you add up all my Cubs cards, they're worth like a dollar fifty cents. Oh my gosh, I'm rich. You know, <laughs> I remember those days of doing that. And I, and I know that she would have like a similar, you know, experience there. Mm -hmm. And so I was really hoping she would just have that fun factor of just being able to look at the cards, see all the artwork, maybe try to figure out a word or two and, and really just engage with the artwork, engage with the, the fact that there are all these cards. And, that kind of dovetailed with the fact that she got these cards from the you know McDonald's Happy Meal, yeah. and they were legitimate Pokemon cards. I thought they were just going to be some like print thing or whatever, yeah. but they were actually something you could actually put into the game and play. So I don't know. We'll have to figure out how to integrate them. Yeah, we'll have to figure out how to integrate them. But like just the fact that she was inventing her own games and she was telling stories and she yeah, was she's been telling a lot of stories around the these Pokemon cards. Like there's just it. It was you know a, watching a little six year old have a great time looking at trading cards. It, you know, it tickled, it tickled my own nostalgia, you know, yeah. seeing all my, you know, my, my giant boxes of, you know, cards that I have in the garage right now. But, you know, just seeing that experience and, and we are not Pokemon experts. I can't even tell you anything about Pokemon, but coming from the standpoint of somebody just kind of stepping into it, spending, you know, 30 bucks on two packs of cards, you know, two boxes with some cool artwork and some play mats. And now she has the capacity to go anywhere, you know, the two of us could play or she can go play with her friend or she can go to a club and figure something out. You know, I, I think it's, I think it was a really cool experience. I think it was a very positive experience. Um, something that we really enjoyed. It did require a lot more of my intervention than I thought. And I yeah. didn't realize it was going to take, it, it was a little bit below her level. So if you're sitting there, above her level. I'm sorry, yeah, it was a little bit above her level. I'm thinking more like eight years old, nine years old. 
might be a better I way to go. I think that would be better. Um, I, I think she can do it once she memorizes the cards and she can read bits of them. I think it'll be better. But, you know, we had a good time with this. And so if you've been hesitant to step into this world, um, it was uh, we were pleasantly surprised, not knowing anything about it and getting into it, about how much strategy, how much math, uh, and how much enjoyment our child would get out of it. Yeah. So if you're interested at all, take a look at yeah. the Pokemon trading well, card game. And, and also, you know, a little side thing. If you're interested in this, maybe we could try to interview somebody, you know, from a homeschooling perspective, try to understand maybe a little bit more about the game, where, where to start, yes, where to go. Yes, if you're out there and this is like a big thing for your family and We'd you love use to this talk to you about for it. education, yeah. yeah, definitely reach out to us. Or I if, think it's if very you're interested, interesting. Or if you're interested in hearing more, maybe put in the comments, whether it's YouTube or put it on our Facebook page, uh, maybe we can go find somebody and see if we can just interview them and, and talk more about, you know. Pokemon in general and what Yeah, I think it's interesting. I think there's this phase that kids go through yeah. that they really enjoy this and our daughter is definitely entering that phase. Thanks so much for joining us today and making us a part of your homeschool journey. Please engage with us on social media. Join our Homeschool Together podcast group on Facebook and find us at Homeschool Together podcast on Instagram. We'd love to hear your feedback, questions, and recommendations. Until next time... Happy homeschooling!